right um, this is July 27th Wednesday evening um, it's been a while since I last uh, the video <coughs> um, it's been very busy the last time was uh, yesterday Tuesday in the morning right before this day started um, so uh, it's been getting harder and harder and some parts where I have some background like uh, the coding stuff, parsing, and uh, GIS. It's been very easy, but overall it's, 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 uh, it's great in general. Um, let's see. Uh, so Tuesday morning we did uh, list cleaning. Um, you know, you get there, they that there's errors, and how do you deal with it? Uh, some tricks of the trade, and just some standard formats. Um, uh, Standard formats and um, you know when can you do some guesses? So that was pretty standard. Um, yeah, uh, I think the CD. How do you replace CDs when I do bulk mail? I think I'm gonna do what they're doing, which is um, just uh, grab the filter it, uh, grab the pull down menu, and just click all the CDs that uh, are the same CD, and then mass replace. Uh, it's faster, I think, than find and replace. Yeah, especially if there are a lot of like small clusters of mistakes. Um, and uh, then we did parsing. So a lot of government officials will give you the information in PDF files, and then <coughs> you try to pass into Excel. They're like all nicely sorted into tables, but you try to pass into Excel, and it comes out uh, horrible. And how do you make sense out of it? Um, so there's different ways. Whatever works for you, works for you. I think the process one great um, uh, takeout for me was um, again, learning about the existence of this text editor. There are a lot of text editors out there. A lot of programmers seem to use Ultra Edit. But, uh, it was a little bit hard to me. Um, and I've been using this little outdated program called EditPad, um, which uh, is not being developed anymore. But someone else was using Notepad++ Plus Plus, and it seems pretty useful. And <clears throat> the great thing is that well, I think on Ultra Edit you can only do simple text search, simple text searches, and regex. But here you have simple text, and then the extended search or something where they like uh, slash slash t slash n and things like that work, and then the regex optionally. So. Um, I think there's this uh, better layered uh, usage scenarios. Um, let's see. Parsing. So yeah, parsing was great. Uh, we looked at the uh, some county report file per, by precinct, and we were trying to export the um, turnout. Um, uh, yes, the turn no the support the vote rate uh, the votes that each candidate was getting only for the governor's race yes so there are a couple of ways and basically it involves whenever the word governor is mentioned flag that and um, hopefully the PDF will be standardized enough so that there will be the exact same number of rows starting from the word governors down below to where the actual uh, people show up and in between there's stuff like well this belongs to such and such precinct signed by someone or something like that that's useless and how do you get the data in relation to the original column that's how I did it and I think the example was a little different but that was the basic idea um, it's prone to errors uh, like if the formatting is a little bit irregular you're screwed and um, you can get around it by making a more sophisticated coding so looking at instead of looking at the quick and easy patterns looking at you know what's a fail proof pattern um, and focusing on that but that would involve a lot of conditional statements and uh, might not be worth our time so um, so that's parsing uh, it was easy then in the afternoon we had um, uh, duplicate or uh, duplicate finding or matching uh, finding a, a record from another one entry and finding an another entry based on a set of criteria that can be defined and it's a very low uh, level like low level technique uh, like 
a company that do this commercially do it much more professionally but we just need to find all we need to do is find the duplicate and and that's it so um, we did it in access and it was funny because uh, the staff and I staff were having a discussion in the lunchroom about oh should we do it in MySQL or Access and they were like wow isn't this too complicated and, and the trainer was like oh you know I have it all sorted out all I need to do is just follow the steps and um, <clears throat> throughout the presentation the presenter was saying oh you know you'll have to deal with this problem in MySQL because uh, you know MySQL you can just convert the data type right away um, at the end, um, most people didn't access, and then they, they offered the option of, oh, if you're not doing MySQL, um, you know, you go out to this room and do it separately. So I was like, um, last week I spent three hours doing MySQL through this online course, and I don't spend, I don't use it today. I'm not gonna use it ever, so um, I wanna go and use it. So like eight people showed up, uh, came to the MySQL group. It was all men. It was kind of weird, and <clears throat> we all sat down to do it. Um, a few people didn't even have it installed, so that's where at the point at which they are. And we had a lot of barriers that um, step by step barriers that we had in just importing the data. Um, we spent like 30 minutes trying to import the data. Oh, it, it felt this part, it felt that part. The uh, the folder path is not uh, properly uh, properly formatted. And um, at the end, I was I was uh, thinking, okay, I'm not going to learn anything out of this, and just move to the access group, and did. A little bit of the prep work for the uh, the rematching, but it wasn't too hard. It was just you, if you understand, you just copy the code and just change the variables. And even if you understand how it works exactly, you can get it done. Um, uh, and the MySQL group managed to do a little bit of matching, uh, actually just importing and not the matching. But um, it's supposed to be more powerful. But the environment we are using at, which is a, a personal server. As opposed to LAMP server, which is what the trainer was used to, it was different, and there were like all these unforeseen errors. So, um, uh, so yeah, the NI staff made a good decision of uh, transitioning to Access. Um, and then we did this session on bullet file sources, and I wasn't quite sure what we were getting at. It was like, it was a little bit strange, just like repetitive from the model session. And so people were saying that we should have the bullet file source first, and then the modeling session. It was a little bit strange. Um, and we did our evening exercise, which was uh, cutting the turf of an entire county. Um, so and then we just cut turf uh, for like small groups, like we called walking lists. Um, uh, and that's very neat because you get the map right away. All you have to do is just click around and then select the users right away. So it's like a little nifty GIS tool. Um, we can't use that tool anymore when we cut turf for 600,000 boilers. They, they can't show on screen uh, properly, at least not with the code that Van has. So our, our question is how do we do it? So you can go prison level um, and there are different ways. We just did the laziest uh, method which was um, uh, which was um, there's the congressional districts there's the Senate, state senate and state assembly districts, and they don't overlap. Um, the lines are like all over, uh, so that creates like small segments of population in between. So this this segment is like the intersection of uh, state senate A and congressional senate B. This is congressional B, but state senate C and so forth, and the different intersections. So um, we just counted how many borders there are by intersection. That's very easy and then, and then. Um, uh, some people did it more statistically, and some people did more like a political approach. But we just did a simple mathematical approach, and <coughs> we overlaid um, the borders. Let's see, the camera is here. So the borders in San Diego. Um, this is a one percent sample of the six hundred thousand. So we went down from seeing the six hundred thousand to. Uh, 600? No, no. From the 600,000, we did the uh, uh, we did the nine quadrant grid and pulled out the GOTB uh, target and the precision target based on propensity and uh, partisanship. 
And from those 80,000 people with the 1% sample receiving 800 voters, which is spread out here, just to give us a brief idea of what it looks like. And then <coughs> uh, this is the congressional districts and the um, assembly districts in around uh, <coughs> San Diego. Uh, blue is the um, assembly. No, no. Red is assembly districts and blue is the congressional district lines. And we overlaid it. Oh, not here. We overlaid it. Uh, it was a little bit weird because they're not the same proportion, but that's fine. And then listed the numbers the, for, of the voters on each district and just did a rough ballpark to make 17,000 in each. And th we knew that this one needed to split in half, this one needed to be split in half, and so forth. Um, so, yeah. And um, apparently Google made this tool called Google Draw. It's part of the document Google Docs uh, suit. So uh, yeah, we just did that as a team. Uh, so that was fun. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't do a whole lot of analysis, but I'm sure with enough time, yes, enough tool, um, we could agree to another like, tool in the beginning. Um, so that's the evening tool, uh, evening exercise for Tuesday. Oh, shoot, 11 minutes. Um, Uh, well, let's see if the time is enough time. <coughs> uh, so on Wednesday, um, we had a session. Oh, this was even better. We had an AI micro session. Everyone loved it. And then JS and uh, we had the pro uh, final project planning. So AI Micros is this uh, little tool on Firefox, and apparently there's also an implementation on Chrome that uh, saves which uh, CSS, like which HTML elements you clicked, you in, your mouse interacted with, and where you type things uh, sequentially, so it can reproduce what you did on the browser. So you can do repetitive steps. Um, uh, you can just let the computer do repetitive steps over and over, or you can give it different variables and let the computer do it with different aspects each time. It can be an increasing number, or it can be a uh, a, a set of variables uh, provided an Excel sheet. <coughs> um, so yeah, I think at Kelsey we could use it to, um, we have a very low level tech uh, email uh, form at our website. People sign up and it just gets sent to us by email directly, via mail to form. So I think we sh um, and we have all these like uh, great <coughs> database entries there and no one has time to process, I don't have time to process. So just do you want to get emails from us? And we have all their contact info. So um, I occasionally get uh, volunteers to enter that data into a mailing list. And I think using the script, um, hope, uh, maybe a Gmail can be an HTML mode. Um, we could have, have the process automatically. Just grab all the, all the people who said, yes, I want to get emails from KRC. Um, so yeah, that's that. And then there are lots of repetitive steps in different places. Um, I guess they haven't had the time to uh, extend the UI into those areas, and it's all very repetitive. So in those areas, you could use the scripts. And uh, the personal experience is that <coughs> sometimes you get do things mad, break things at the end, and people get very upset at you. Um, JS, uh, this is very uh, very academic, and it was actually conceptually very. Um, well presented, a lot of different concepts presented well, but not very relevant. Like there's a Mercator projection and such and such projection. We don't care. We just want to know that, okay, if you get a California map, use this projection. If you get a world map, use the Mercator, uh, Mercator no, not the Mercator. Uh, I think the WGS projection. And that's all we need to know. Um, not, not the whole, theory behind it, but we spent way too much time talking about latitude, longitude, which was which, uh, what are the projections, and what's the technology behind it. And <clears throat> yeah, people were um, not very satisfied. And what I remember most is uh, the person who was sitting next to me who said, oh, I, I just drew two points. Now we're going to win the elections. And that's not the case. The idea, I think, was that you learn this, and you know, it's a direct practice, and you can learn and do more advanced things in the end. But yeah, I think also poor motivator. That's too bad. But um, I found two great tools for the presentation. One is Tile Mill. Um, that was great. And uh, Quantum JS, which apparently is as powerful as ArcGIS. We'll have to test it a bit more. And then we had the project planning. 
uh, we planned out what we're going to do over the next two days uh, in teams.